Hey, yup. Right, for just over four, more like four and a half years of ownership of the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 now, the bike's been off the road for a year simply because, uh, you know, I was busy with the other bikes and I allowed the MOT to expire. So it was easier for me really just to declare the bike off road for a year while I got on with other things. Now, you would think running a motorcycle channel and running six bikes that you've got loads of riding time. Actually, it's the opposite. This channel keeps me really busy. I've got at least two days filming a week, two days editing a week, at least a full day every week uh, dealing with emails, comments and queries. And I also have a life and other interests outside of this channel. So, you know, time for riding is at a premium. Now, the two classics, the Classic 500 and the Classic 350, have hogged the limelight for the last two years. And what I'm finding since I've started to feature the Interceptor again is people are asking me about certain aspects of the bike, you know, accessories and fittings. Now, I have made videos on all these uh, bits and pieces, including full fitting instructions. They are still there to view, but unfortunately, putting, uh, you know, a list together and posting it on one of my videos youtube just doesn't have the um capacity to allow you to do that because there are a lot of them so what i thought i would do is just do a recap on the bits and pieces that are on the bike starting with that big bulbous fitting on the left hand side of the handlebar which everyone keeps asking me about now the camera angle that you usually get of this fitting uh, actually makes it look worse than it really is. It's not nearly as obtrusive as it looks in this video. It is actually the mounting for my TomTom -tom sat nav. And I fitted it to the interceptor in sort of the earlier days of the channel if you like when I was able to get around quite a lot and I do have a habit of getting lost so a sat nav is really handy. I actually think I get more questions about this particular fitting than anything else. You know, everybody seems totally mystified by it. So now you know. Now, actually, when I filmed this video, I was quite surprised by the amount of accessories that uh, have been bestowed upon this machine. It is quite a big list, and what I will try to do is put links in the... Um, video description if people want to go and have a look at them because like i say people are constantly asking me uh, who they're made by and where they can get them from so hopefully this video will go somewhere towards uh, mitigating that for people now one thing that you can't see because it's hidden away inside the bike is the dna stage 2 kit that's uh, performance filter and bell mouth which provides a wonderful induction raw for this bike it does enhance performance slightly, although it's not as marked as the enhancement for the Classic 350, but I tend to fit these to all my bikes. It's a quick, simple, easy way of improving the performance of the bike. And I like them because they do help to improve fuel economy figures, although if you're one of those people that prefer to... Um, ride quicker to make the most of that little bit of extra power then it, it does tend to negate any savings on fuel consumption if i remember correctly because it is some time uh, since i fitted it and of course you know i've not ridden the bike for a couple of years it got me into the 80 plus mpg bracket if the bike is just ridden normally somewhere in the mid 80s i think but don't quote me on that because as i say i've had a lot of sleep since then now, I'll get onto the exhausts in just a moment because they have been covered quite extensively in very recent videos. But starting with the suspension, if you notice on the fork tops there, just visible in this footage, uh, I've got the YSS adjustable front fork system. Again, one of the earliest modifications that I made to this bike. And when it comes to handling and comfort, probably the best modification that you could possibly make for this bike it really transforms the front end now one thing that i do need to touch on with this particular modification we have a lot of noddies um professing themselves to be suspension experts i'm not a suspension expert that's why i consulted very closely with yss this was actually a collaboration with yss 
in some of their older kits in days gone by, it required that the OEM damper needed to be drilled in order for the cartridge emulators to work correctly. And what a lot of people seem to rely on these days is information from those days gone by in that I didn't install these correctly because I didn't drill out the original dampers. Now what I usually found with a lot of these people telling me off for not doing the job properly is that they don't have an interceptor, they don't have this kit, but they remember a kit that they had 10 years ago where the instructions said that you should drill out the damper. It's a bit like trying to use the user manual for a coffee maker and applying it to your TV set. YSS may still make kit kits that require you to do that, but from the YSS spokesman at the time, admittedly it was a few years ago, if the instructions for the kit that you have doesn't mention drilling out the original damper, you don't drill out the original damper because your emulators are designed to work in conjunction with your damper. Over the years, I have had a few conversations with suppliers of these kits who've had problems with customers that have made a total mess of the front suspension by drilling out the dampers when they shouldn't have done. I'll say no more. Right, so let's have a look at some of the other bits and pieces on the bike. Rear suspension, we've got the sort of conventional rear shocks from YSS. A more traditional looking gas shock. I do find this more comfortable than the piggyback shock that I had fitted before that. Which, to be honest, was more of a track shock. Although, it depends on the individual. I, I just found at low speeds, it was a little bit bumpy. I'm still in the process of dialing these in, to be honest, but, you know, straight away I noticed a difference on our ever-slowing roads here in the UK. Sub 40 mile per hour comfort, I, I think, is paramount, because that's the speed range that you tend to find yourself in the most. And while we're looking at that area of the bike, of course, we've got the Enfield Precision polished stainless steel shorty silencers now while we're looking at that just below them or just below the uh, rear swing arm you've got the brass franken bobbin from motone customs not strictly speaking necessary for a bike that has a center stand although they do come in handy occasionally i've got a pair of stainless polished ones which i'm going to uh, i think swap around with these because the brass does look a little bit out of place on this bike. They were fitted for review purposes more than anything else. Now, from Hitchcock's motorcycles, I've already fitted the front, again, polished stainless steel mudguard. And I have the rear mudguard waiting to go on. Watch out for that in an upcoming video, hopefully in the next few weeks. I know I've been saying that for about three years, but we are ready to do it now. These evoke the look and feel of an early 1970s motorcycle they all had metal chromed mudguards of course being it's polished stainless steel they don't have the same problems that are associated with chrome but they do have the same look they're a good halfway house in length being a little bit shorter than the standard mudguards with the fender extender on but a little bit longer than if you take the fender extender off. And above that, again, we have the Enfield Precision um, oil cooler cover. A big improvement over the original, and these are also available in silver. Moving up to the handlebars, we have the Trip Machine Leather Grip Wraps. These have been fitted to the bike, I think, for years now. They have encountered a lot of damp and a lot of weather, they are showing the ridge, but they're standing up really well, showing no signs that they're going to need replacing any time soon. We've also got the Halcyon bar and mirrors. These can be difficult to get hold of now, but the original stadium version has been re-released or reissued. Uh, I made a video on that last week. Best mirrors you will ever buy for your motorcycle. Excellent uninterrupted rearward vision, made completely from stainless steel there's nothing on the market can come anywhere near them now the seat is the latest iteration of royal enfield's comfort seat for the continental gt which obviously 
is a perfect fit for the interceptor as well they have the same frame i had the original comfort seat i've got to admit this one is better i don't know what they've done to it but it is an improvement and i've also got the painted cowling for the pillion pad which i personally think sets the bike off nicely some might not like it but obviously you don't have to have it sticking with royal enfield's oem parts for the moment we have the stainless steel polished engine guard a very nice piece in my opinion now just for clarification i bought all these from moto gb who are no longer a royal enfield stockist so i will leave links to hitchcock's motorcycles who are now an authorized stockist of the original royal enfield parts below that we have the sump guard again a royal enfield part not the nicest looking part in the world but it does protect the underside of your engine keeping most of the mud fling and debris from uh, sort of causing any damage essential kit for any motorcycle in my opinion Right, a few more parts from Motown Customs. First of all, we have their famous Union Jack tank pads. These are a universal fit, but I have to say they fit particularly well on the Interceptor. You don't have to have the Union Jack style. They do have uh, Cafe Racer style, which is a little bit plainer and simpler. For the most part, I suppose this is an aesthetic adornment, but... If you're one of those people that like to grip the tank with your knees, it does protect your tank from scratching from gritty clothing. Moving on. The Moton Microblade, an, an all-aluminium fly screen with some really nice bracketry in my opinion. This is the brushed version in anodized black. For the most part it is a styling piece but it does also help clean up air around the chest area and reduces buffeting around the helmet area. Typical Moton quality as is their up and over handlebar riser kit. Some people struggle with the uh, stock sort of configuration of the handlebars. These just raise them and pull them back a little bit to aid comfort for some people. And like all Moto and gear, they are OEM quality. Right, last but not least, luggage options. The original Royal Enfield pannier rails for the Interceptor leave a lot to be desired. And Long Ride came up with these. These are actually a very useful and sturdy pannier rail. They're actually designed primarily to work with their own click lock bag system, but they do lend themselves very well to any sort of strap on or tie on panniers. Like all Long Ride gear, it's a little on the pricey side, but it is very high quality. And finally, of course, we have the Trip Machine side panel bags. Handy size for phones, wallets, keys, that kind of thing. And they do come complete with a waterproof cover. Again, high quality, very typical of Trip Machine. I love the look of these, but swapping them between these and your normal side panels is a bit of a fiddle. So if you're considering these bags, you should be of the mindset that you're going to be leaving them on pretty much permanently. Actually, no, that's not fair. They're a semi-permanent fixture. Right, so that's the story so far with all the accessories fitted to the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. I hope that's answered questions for a lot of people. Mainly newer viewers, I suppose, that went around when I did the original series on this bike. But it might help to refresh memories of uh, older viewers as well. Once again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and my other videos and in doing so helping to support this channel. I really do appreciate it. I would also appreciate it if you would consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. These things do help both the videos and the channel to progress forward. It sort of manipulates the algorithm and prompts YouTube to introduce these videos to other people. So your indulgence would be much appreciated. Now, if you want to help the channel out in other ways, you can subscribe to my Patreon page, or you can use the Super Thanks button down below. Now, coming to the end of this video, I've realised that linking to each individual product is going to be a nightmare. In fact, there might not be room on the uh, video description to accommodate it. So what I'll do is I will leave a link to the relevant section on each of the manufacturer's websites.
you'll just have to do a little bit of your own browsing to find out exactly what it is you want to look at. I am, of course, going to be back on Friday, so until then, please ride safely, and I'll see you soon.